The market for small nuclear reactors has become crowded. Over 80 different designs are available, ranging from water-cooled reactors to molten salt reactors and everything in between. Renewed pushes for carbon-free energy and reliable electricity have increased interest and in competition to the point that governments and utilities are really spoiled for choice. One design, though, has quietly started to separate itself from the pack, and that's the GE Hitachi BWRX300. Say that three times fast. Now, if you're outside the nuclear industry, you'd be forgiven for having never heard of it before. Even within the industry, it hasn't received a lot of attention. But what it lacks in newspaper articles and occasional media hype, it makes up for in a much more important metric, actually being built. What makes the BWRX300 so popular is a variety of things, but it can be boiled down to this. It's a simple version of a recognized design from a well-established and reputable company at a reasonable cost. There's no wildly new unproven technology, and the company General Electric has been around designing nuclear reactors for 70 years. This has led to a string of announcements over the past year, with one project after another declaring that it too is going with GE's small design. Canada, the USA, Sweden, the UK, Poland, Estonia, the list goes on, are all places where the BWRX300 has made significant progress, ranging from simple technology selection, where a country announces they are pursuing further detailed evaluations, all the way to actually starting construction. While an early lead is no guarantee of long-term success, it's worth taking a look at why GE finds itself in that lucky position. So let's dive in and see what turned the BWRX300 from just another possibility into the world's current reactor of choice. The BWRX300 came about from a much larger design, GE's own Economic Simplified Boiling Water Reactor, or ESBWR, a somewhat more conventional reactor that was designed to produce over 1500 megawatts of electricity. However, not really finding any commercial success, GE shrunk the design and power output down to just 300 megawatts electric, classifying it as a small modular reactor or SMR. Like other designs in this category, SMR should have broader appeal with lower upfront costs and more manageable construction time. Two of the biggest hurdles for anybody looking to build a reactor. GE isn't the first company to make what is essentially a small version of a large reactor. Westinghouse preliminarily designed and then later quietly abandoned their SMR based on technology from its AP1000 reactor. Babcock and Wilcox created and then gave up on its M-Power design, and so too did the Canadian CanDo SMR, originally based on the much larger CanDo 6. All were based on more or less conventional designs that ended up not really going anywhere. Unlike these plants though, GE's design has a few things going for it. First, and perhaps most importantly, the design is actually basically finished. If we look at the list of small reactors, we'll find that the vast majority of them are only in the concept stage and nowhere near ready for construction. A lot of companies like to talk about how their design will revolutionize the industry or consume all of the world's nuclear waste. But like a lot of things, the devil is in the details and in the nuclear industry, the details matter. It's difficult to start building a reactor without having the complete information about every system and component available. But GE's design is more or less completed, and to borrow a phrase a lot of marketers and politicians like to use, shovel ready. The only other Western design that is at a similar point is NuScale's Voyager SMR, which is currently under review in the US and isn't expected to be approved until 2024. Second, the BWRX300 incorporates a lot of design features that prospective customers are looking for. The name BWRX300 is a bit of a mouthful, but it is short for Boiling Water Reactor, Roman numeral 10, since it is GE's 10th iteration of the BWR design, and 300, for the 300 megawatts of electricity it produces. Because it is the 10th iteration of their design, that means it incorporates features that can only come from years of experience in operating previous versions, providing a level of maturity that potential buyers probably can't find elsewhere. Those features can then be combined with other advancements, like passive safety systems and more efficient operations. Unlike most other plants, which push water through the reactor core with large pumps, the BWRX300 uses natural circulation, which simplifies the design and components while reducing the amount of maintenance required. And like other boiling water reactors, as the name implies, steam for the turbine is created in the reactor vessel itself. This means the large steam generators used by other designs aren't necessary, reducing cost and improving efficiency. What it doesn't have though, is any of the more ambitious advancements seen in some other reactor designs. There's no molten salt, no extreme temperatures, and no thorium just regular water and uranium. This makes the BWRX300 somewhat boring compared to some of the other designs, and potentially misses out on some of the improved safety or fuel efficiency that those reactors can offer. However, boring can be a good thing when it comes to nuclear. It means predictable and reliable, two factors that are appealing to the usually risk-adverse electric utilities industry. 
And just because the BWRX300 doesn't use some of those more advanced features, doesn't mean it is any less safe. The plant is built with what is called an isolation condenser above the reactor. While that may sound complicated, it's basically a large amount of reserve water on standby if things go wrong. In the event of an emergency, this tank of water is used to naturally cool the reactor for seven days without the need for any power or operator action, which is pretty much expected from any modern plant. All of these features come together to provide a design that is relatively simple, based on proven technology, and fundamentally safe. The BWRX300 also has the backing of GE itself, a company with 70 years of nuclear experience in over 65 reactors around the world in 10 countries. The boiling water reactor is the second most popular type of nuclear reactor worldwide, with a long history of operating experience. Combine that with existing supply chains, nuclear fuel facilities, support for maintenance and operations, engineering teams, and it provides a level of confidence that a potential buyer won't be stuck with some reactor and nobody to help them over the plant's 60-year lifetime. All of this has meant that the BWRX300 has had considerable success in the small reactor marketplace. The largest announcement came at the end of 2021, when Canada's Ontario Power Generation announced it had selected GE's design to be built at the Darlington Nuclear Station outside Toronto. And on December 2nd, 2022, they officially broke ground, becoming the first SMR project in North America to be under construction. And reactors like this one need to operate. Poland was quick to follow, announcing in December 2021 that it too intended to deploy at least 10 of the reactors by the early 2030s. Poland, we have to decommission about 200 qualified boilers. And we would like to replace these with the zero emission energy. Estonia also announced their selection of the BWRX300 for deployment in the early 2030s. Estonia is part of European Union, which has uh, adopted legally binding policy goal of achieving carbon neutrality. Small modular reactors, I believe, will be most important part of the solution. And GE has submitted preliminary licensing reviews to the US, Canadian and UK nuclear regulators. In all, there have been five major projects around the world that have selected the BWRX300, more than any other design so far. Now, predictions are hard to make, so be careful of anyone telling you they can predict the future, especially if they're trying to sell you something. The nuclear industry is well known for making lofty promises, only to see them fizzle out after a few years. But there are a few things we can consider that might influence what success GE might have with their small reactor over the long term. At an estimated price of $1 billion per unit, the total cost isn't cheap but still is much lower than new large reactors, which can be upwards of $5 to $10 billion or more per unit. Either way, that puts the BWRX300 right at $3,333 per kilowatt, which is pretty good as far as nuclear goes. Typical large plants built in China and Korea have been built for around $4,000 per kilowatt, so there's a somewhat reasonable discount that can be had if it can be realized. The current schedule for the lead unit under construction in Canada has the Darlington unit coming online in 2028. We won't know if $1 billion is accurate, or if we might see the kinds of delays that have led to spiraling costs that seem to have plagued other nuclear construction projects. Only time will tell. Elsewhere, the small footprint of the BWRX300 and its simpler design may also lead to broader appeal, making it easier to build reactors in areas that may not have been able to accommodate larger, more complex designs. And since it is a comparable size, the reactor could provide a way to more directly replace older coal plants, this can make siting and supporting renewables much more manageable with existing infrastructure in place. With more countries seriously looking to reduce their carbon footprint, its increasing popularity would also create a network of worldwide operators using the same design. This means information sharing and operating experience, which can be invaluable to newcomers. As they say, however, success breeds success, and the BWRX300 might be poised to do just that. People naturally congregate to what they see as winners, and a string of early successes could perpetuate the momentum for GE. So what do you think? Will GE's small reactor continue to lead, or is it missing out on too many of the advances offered by other designs? Let me know in the comments down below. And thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.